I, I came into payments um, almost accidentally. Um, I, I took, uh, following my, uh, my number of years at Pricewaterhouse, became PwC, that became IBM. Um, I, I then worked uh, as a program manager in the uh, sort of the traditional project sense, uh, putting in, uh, in place uh, transformation programs for the likes of Aviva, the insurance company, uh, BP as well. And then I actually took a, a number of years off where I was uh, effectively playing second fiddle uh, to my husband, who, whose career continued whilst uh, we started a family. I did try uh, initially going back to, to work when, when my, uh, after my first was born, but I actually found that it was incredibly difficult to, um, to manage uh, not being able to put everything to my job and being the last to pick up from nursery and the guilt associated with that and not being able to put effort into my relationship. So I felt that I was doing three jobs badly so in fact, once I, I was expecting my second, or I had my second, and then uh, my my husband's job moved overseas, it be, it was became the right e excuse really to not try and do everything, and you know focus on on looking after the family and letting my my husband's career take off. Because what I found was otherwise was we would get to five o'clock. And I'd be phoning him up and we would be uh, sort of debating whose meeting was more important and who was going to get back for nursery pickup. And I'm sure that that's sort of something that that resonates. So I got I got into I got into fintech actually having taken seven years out of paid employment. I was doing charity work and things, but, you know, seven years out of paid em employment. And I I got back into it almost as a returnship program started off uh, two days uh, a week and my confidence was shot at the beginning um, I wouldn't have gone into a c-level role for sure but as my confidence uh, resumed uh, I, I rose within the company and, and am where I am today I, it was four years uh, between where I, I joined GPS and becoming uh, CEO. I was COO after 18 months or, or two years, but it was a, a smaller company at the time. Um, but genuinely, I wouldn't have gone into that, uh, that role. And I thought I, whilst I'd had the period out of uh, paid employment, I thought I'd been doing all the things I needed to do to maintain confidence because within the charity work that I was doing, I was still organizing committee meetings. I was organizing events. I was speaking at events. I was doing some media briefings. I was talking to politicians and things. So I thought I was still doing things and then sort of also keeping up with, you know, the next version of email or Excel or, you know, whatever it was to, to maintain skills. But nonetheless, you know, going, being out of the workplace, even the language I used had simplified. Because if you spend seven years where the majority of your conversation is, is, is towards your toddlers, you're using a very narrow range of, of language and you realize you're not using the breadth of vocabulary. So it's even simple things like that do, uh, you know, do wane, they do deteriorate over time. So I'm keen to talk about it just because there are very few cases out there of people that have been in, you know, taken, come fully out of full-time employment, then gone fully back in, and then being able to resume a career and a, and a career trajectory. 